Welcome to another Cybex help video. This help video is based on the secondary injection control or staged injection, as some people might call it, with the Cybex range of ECUs. What I'm going to go through in this video is how that those injectors are first assigned in the ECU, the best type of output to use, how they're set up, and some tricks along the way. So the first thing to note is that how many fuel outputs are actually present on your ECU. So with the S7 that I've got here, we've actually got 16 fuel outputs available. So this is perfect for this application because this is a V8 with two sets of injectors. So what we're actually going to do first is go over the pin assignments. Now the pin assignments are a blue item, so you can, you can change it live in the software, but it won't take effect until you do a device program. So let's go to pin assignments and then scroll down to our injector area. And you can actually see here that the primary injectors, which are your um, general day-to-day -day use ones, the ones that are used for idling, starting, etc., are on fuel, uh, fuel 1 through 8. And then the secondary injectors are assigned on fuel 9 through 16. This is good practice to do it this way. It makes it a bit more clear in your pinouts and, uh, and also in the calibration-wise of which outputs uh, are used. And it's easier to think of in terms of the numbers. So once you've got those values populated, you need to program the ECU for those to take account. Now, what we then need to do is obviously work out our secondary multiplier. Now, this is the difference between your primary injectors and the secondary injectors in terms of size. Now, if you know the size of the injectors, then great. Um, if you don't, there are some tricks along the way that we can go over. So I'm actually going to just go with the assumption of saying that these injectors are actually, say, 600 primary and then 1,400 cc uh, secondary. So I'm just going to open up a calculator and the way I can easily calculate a multiplier for that would be 600 divided by 1400 and that would give us a multiplier of 0.42 and that would be a good starting point to enter into your secondary multiplier. So for me at the moment I'm just going to enter into here say 0.5 just as a rough point um, now, I actually don't know the size of the secondaries at the moment, just as for this example, let's just say that I don't. And I also don't know the opening time for these injectors as well. Now, a lot of luxuries that are available with aftermarket injectors is that from like the Bosch, Siemens, Injector Dynamics, uh, the opening times are available. And, uh, and once you know those information, you can obviously then populate this in your secondary injector opening time. So when you're in here, you can populate the values that are uh, provided from the data sheets of the injectors and actually allow you to have a proper opening time, dead time for the injector you're using. Now, let's say I actually don't know the size of the ones on this application. So what I'm actually going to do is a little trick that now allows me to find out um, roughly kind of the opening time of the injector at a given voltage. Now, if you have the ability of a power supply to be able to adjust the voltage that the ECU and the injector is seeing, then that's great uh, because you can obviously manipulate it or you can unplug the alternator fuse to lower your uh, voltage across the, um, the engine and the injector and then do the same test to get it for different points. But for 99% of applications, you're going to know what the injector values are because you'll be buying aftermarket injectors and the data sheet will be available. So what I'm actually going to do is just talk about this alternative secondary injection time. This works for, uh, on direct injection cars as well, which are using port injectors. And what this allows me to do is actually bring in the secondaries slowly. So you can see here that my fuel final, let's make this larger, it's normal size. You can see the fuel final for my secondary injectors now is at 0.2 milliseconds. Now, obviously, if I'm just taking careful note of my lambda, you can see there it's 0.96. Uh, if I bring the secondaries up, just want to look to make sure they're not changing. So we're going to bring them up slowly. 0.8, still not seeing any change. 0.9, no. One millisecond. Okay. Let's change the fine control now by going to option and then pressing fine. Now I can bring this up slowly. Now what we're looking for is when that lambda changes, when that actual injector is opening. So let's just get this stable and I'll just make this change now. Keep coming up. And there. Okay, so we see that, that step change then. It was quite a, a large step change. Now, what you can do is turn off your secondary, uh, your closed lambda is probably a good idea with this. Just disable that. That way you is not taking any effect. 
Let's go back to one millisecond so we can see that what the value of in uh, the lambda we've got. I'll just bring this up again slowly. And there you can see the lambda start to change. And that then is giving you an idea that the injector is actually starting to open then. So that'd be a good kind of starting point uh, for an actual injector opening time. And we can just keep going up more. And you can see now there's slowly the change of the lambda that's being applied to it for that so your actual opening time after the uh, dead time. Okay, so let's put this back to zero. You must remember to put this back to zero, this calibration. And then I'm just going to chuck in here because I knew roughly this is a rough point. Say 1.1, .1. just bring this up. Let's put that at six as an opening time. So we've got an idea, but like I said, most of that information will be provided by the injector manufacturers. Uh, in this in particular instance, I'm going to have to characterize these on the bench uh, to do that. So once you've got that, then another aspect to look at is your um, minimum primary injector close time. Now, what this is, is this is when the close time of the injector is actually getting less than one millisecond, okay? Basically, we know the injector opening time is gonna be large, okay? So obviously a high injector duty cycle and that we don't wanna be running those kind of duty cycles for long on lots of injectors. It's not good for the injector, it creates a lot of heat. So I've actually got a, um, uh, like a close limit here of one millisecond, okay? And once you reach that point of where the close time is actually less the, or one millisecond or less, what it will automatically do, the strategy, it will automatically bring in the secondary injectors if they are available, okay? So if you've got them assigned, it will automatically bring them in. That way you don't actually have to have um, any values in the split table set up. And this is also true for direct injection cars. So if we actually, I've got an injecting, direct injection uh, map here. On the direct injection, you won't see that uh, close time value. You see an in direct injection angle limit. Now this angle limit is a fraction of one revolution because uh, obviously you're not injecting for 720 with a DI engine. And uh, what we need to do is obviously this is a like a, an angle limit. So general good point to start with with this when you've got direct injection and port injectors, start around about 0.7 around there. If you want the inject injectors to be used as much as possible, which in certain cars you do because obviously they make more power that way. Um, then obviously the highest I'd recommend is 0 0.9. I wouldn't go any higher than that generally. Okay, coming back to our port injector setup, what we're going to now do, we've got a kind of secondary injector rough idea, and now we've got some secondary injector opening time values populated. What we're going to now do is actually bring in the secondary injectors. Now, as you can see, there are two injector split maps. So this allows you to actually have manual control of when the injectors are, secondary injectors are coming in. And uh, you can actually change between these split maps if you wanted to in uh, calibration switch, fuel map select, okay, fuel split map select. So you can choose to switch between them if you want to have different split values for any reason. Um, but basically we're gonna just do all of this on uh, the split one table. Now the way to see this table is this table is a split of the difference between the primary and secondary. So if you want the engine to be running on 50% on the primaries and 50% on the secondaries, then you'd enter into here 50%. Uh, if you want it to be more on the secondaries, then obviously the value would be higher, like 60, 70%, okay? So, and if you, again, if you want to be able to run as much as possible on the primaries and then bring in the secondaries, then you can do it using the uh, minimum close time. Okay, so let's come back to the injector split table. Now we can actually see how close we've got our secondary multiplier, because obviously if you know the data of the two injectors, then it will, should be pretty good in the secondary multiplier, but there are some non-linearities in uh, injectors at low opening times. So we need to make sure we can get above that. There's no point doing this test at idle. A general good rule of thumb to do this would probably be around around about say on load atmospheric at like 3000, 4000 RPM, where your injector opening time is gonna need to be like above kind of two or two milliseconds. Um, when you've done that, obviously what you can then do is you take the non-linearity non out of the injector to actually make sure your multiplier is right. Now I'm just stationary at the moment for the, the sake of this help video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring up the RPM and just uh, set a limiter point um, to do so. So I've actually just done that by going to calibration switches, drive by wire, maximum pedal time, I've just stuck it at 6%. So my throttle can't ever go higher than 6%. And that should hold my RPM nice and steady. 
Um, you can use a rev limiter if you want, but you need to make sure that no fuel control is done with it. Um, and it's, I, I wouldn't advise it because even ignition control can have an effect on the Lambda. So the, the driver wire is a nice way of doing it. And, uh, or if you're on a dyno and you can load so whole, even better. You just hold it at that given load and then you can manipulate this value to suit. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's bring the RPM up. Okay, now I've got the Lambda control off here, which you want to make sure you've got done. And you can see at this given point, we've got a Lambda here of about 0 points. Let me give it time to settle and stuff like that. So we've got a lambda point here of, say, 0 0.8384, around there. Now, if I bring in the secondary injectors, just, just put in there 40%. You can see that the mixture goes rich. Okay, let's go 50%. 50% is quite a nice way of doing it. You've got the secondary injectors out of that uh, opening time of the nonlinearity that I was talking about. So you want quite a high value on there. And then uh, what we're going to then do, let's just come back to that. Actually, see that the the value is actually pretty decent already. Actually, press zero there. You can see the lambda is hardly changing. So you've got 0 0.8444 there. Let's bang this back to 50%. That's pretty close. I mean, it's a bit of a lucky guess to be fair. But let's uh, let's go back down to our secondary multiplier and actually change that. Um, what they what that actually means in this application is the uh, primary injectors and the secondaries. Are, uh, are the actual same size uh, but let's just change this to 0 0.7 for the, uh, the sake of this video and you can see there that now the actual mixture is actually richer okay so if I then take this back to zero you can see it leans out and then putting it back you can see it goes rich so we know that there the secondary multiplier is wrong and uh, what we would then do is adjust the secondary multiplier you can adjust it live until your blend between the two points is exactly the same lambda and you know you've got a good idea then of uh, what your multiplier should be once you've got that you can then set up your injector split table to suit so uh, on this particular application say i'd probably have it say like a 50 50 up there so i'd put a 50 percent split up there and then uh, blend it in in doing so and then that way it allows you to bring in the secondaries at higher higher load in rpm and, uh, and hopefully this video has been helpful in getting this set up on your car.